Hey folks, welcome back. This is lab number 13 in our final lab for the semester. Um, this week in lab, we're going to be looking at data structures and specifically we're going to be looking at linked lists. So um, in your lab this week, you're going to be creating a linked list where you're going to be adding in some Blu-ray discs. I'm going to do a quick little example where we're going to build a linked list of strings. So before we begin, uh, anytime you're dealing with a linked list, you're going to need a node class. So we're going to call it node and we're going to call it node.cs as the file name. And this is going to be a class node, which is going to always generally have two fields. The first is going to be your data field, which in my case is going to be a string. And I'm going to call it data. And then that should have an R in there. And then we're going to have a public node next, which is how you're going to get to the next node in the list. All right, so that's generally what you're going to have. The thing that's going to vary in this is going to be the data that you're holding in there. In my case, I'm going to do a linked list of strings. All right, so over in main.cs, we are going to start off and inside of my class, my main class, I'm going to declare a pointer or a link that point links to the beginning of the list, which I'm going to call head. So I'm going to, it's going to have to be static because I'm doing this all in the main class. Um, so I'm going to say static node head equals null. And that creates for me a linked list that basically has nothing in it. All right, so I'm going to add a method in for adding nodes into my list. So we're going to have public static void add node, which is going to take in a string as new data. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a temporary node first. So we're going to say node temp equals new node. And there we have it. All right, so now to that node, I'm going to set the data. So that's going to be temp.data is equal to new data. That's the data that came in to this method. I'm going to assign that to the data in the node. And then I'm going to say temp.next is equal to head. All right, now that's a bit confusing, but I've made a new node and I've put the data into it. I'm setting the next link in that new node to the same place as head. So that has the effect of putting it at the beginning of the list. The last step is I need to change head to be equal to that new node. So effectively, I'm moving the next pointer on the temp over to point to the same place as head. So at this moment, it's linked into the list, but the head isn't there yet. And then the last step is to move head to the front of the list to see that new node. All right. Well, if I was going to actually use that, then what I would do is I would say something like add node, and we'll add in Enda, and then we'll add in uh, Jane and we'll add in Paula. All right, so three people into the list. Now it would be nice if I could actually see what was in the list. Um, this hello world doesn't need to be there, that's just stuff. So I'm going to write a method to print out the list, the link list for me. So I'm going to say public static void print list. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off and I'm going to create a temp link that I can use to move down the list. I don't want to destroy the list as I'm going, so I don't want to be changing head. So I'm just going to make a node temp, which points to the same place as head to start with. And then I'm going to say while temp is not null, I'm going to print out whatever's in that node, which is known as temp.data. And then I'm going to set temp equal to temp.next. All right, so I'm printing out whatever's in the node that's linked to from that first temp link, which is going to, in this case, be the last thing that was added in. So it's going to be Paula. And then I'm setting temp equal to temp next. So I'm basically moving temp one node down the list so that it's now pointed to the second node in the list, which is the one that has Jane in it. That's still not equal to null, so it's going to print out Jane. Then it's going to move temp to the next pointer, which is the one that links to enda. It's then going to come back to the top of the list. That's not null. It's going to print enda. It's going to set that to the next pointer, which is a null. Back to the top of the list, it's null, and the loop is going to end. So the last thing I need to do down here is I just need to call print list. And that should be it. Let's go ahead and run this guy. So we're adding an enda. We're adding that the front of the list. So initially, the list has nothing in it. We're going to put an enda in at the front of the list. That's going to push the null down a little bit. Then we're going to add a Jane on front of that, which is going to push enda down. And then we're going to add a Paula on front of that, which is going to push Jane and enda down. So in the end, Paula's at the front of the list. 
and then Jane is in the middle, and then Enda's at the end, because I'm adding to the front of the list because of the way that I coded it. And so as a result, when you print them, you see them in reverse order, Paula, Jane, Enda. So that's adding a note to the front of a linked list, and it also shows you how to print a list. If you're wanting to add to the end of the list, you're going to use a loop, something similar to this, to work your way down the list until you get to that last node. When you're pointed to the last node, you're going to change its next pointer to point to the new node, and that's how you're going to insert at the end of the list. So hopefully that gives you a hint as to how to go about doing today's lab. Um, so that's it for this week. We are done with data structures. Next week, you guys will be taking your lab final here in class. And so good luck on that. And that's the end of these videos. So I'll see you guys around. Bye-bye.